Lord Jesus Christ, amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the second scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 26. In Jesus Christ, you are all sons of God through your faith. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, sometimes there can be conflict in God's church. Sometimes Christian churches have their troubles. That's because in the Christian church, it's made up of forgiven sinners. Forgiven sinners. And there are times when people have different opinions in the church. For example, sometimes there can be different opinions over what color to paint a Sunday school room. Sometimes there can be different opinions over what kind of carpet to put in the hallway. Sometimes there can be different opinions over what kind of music we should have in our church. And you see, that's what's going on here in God's Word before us this morning. You see, the people in the Christian church there in the city of Galatia, they are having a time of conflict, and this is the issue. There were a lot of the people in the church who were of the Jewish background, and they wanted everyone who would become members of their church to become circumcised. Well, that's kind of like us saying today that because in our Lutheran church we started because Germans came over here from Germany and started the Lutheran church, that now to be a member of the church you have to follow all of the German culture and traditions. Well, the Apostle Paul was upset by this. He knew this wasn't right. And so Paul wrote this letter to the people in the city of Galatia to explain to them how they could get through this time of conflict. Now, Paul started out by explaining to them that years before this, there was a dividing wall in the temple. And the dividing wall, it separated the court of the Jews from the court of the Gentiles. A Gentile is anyone who's not a Jew. And they had signs posted that if any Gentile ever went into the temple, that they could be killed. Well, Paul explained that that was no longer going on. He explained that they weren't following those rules anymore. Paul explained to them that it was faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior from sin and death that made you part of the Christian church, not by being circumcised, not by following all kinds of rules. And so Paul gave them some ways here to be able to reduce their conflict, to be able to promote harmony in their church. Maybe it can help if I share with you a story that Martin Luther told years ago. It was about two mountain goats who were on a narrow ledge on a mountain. Now, the ledge was so narrow that only one of them could pass. They both couldn't pass each other. So here on the one side was a sheer cliff, and on the other side was the mountain wall. And so here you had these two mountain goats facing each other. They, there wasn't enough room. They couldn't turn around. They couldn't back up. And so here they were in a time of conflict. What were they going to do? Well, no, they didn't have a fight, and one of them knocked the other off the cliff to, get, go, go, to move along. No. What happened was one of the mountain goats lay down on the path, and the other mountain goat climbed over him. And then both of them were able to continue along the path. Both of them were able to be safe. Well, you see, that's what the Apostle Paul is trying to do with the people here in the church of Galatia, to try to get them to reduce conflict in their church. He's trying to promote harmony. And so this is what it looked like. He shared with them three ways in which they could reduce the conflict and promote harmony in the church. And the first way was to accept one another. Simply accept one another. Accept one another as fellow believers in Jesus. Scott Ginsberg once told a story about a time he went to a conference, and they gave to all the participants a name tag. 
Well, many of the participants, they just threw their name tag aside, but not Scott. Scott put his name tag on. And he was surprised at what happened. Because wherever he went, people would call him by name, and they would introduce themselves to him. People were friendly to him, and he was shocked by all of the attention. Well, after the conference, Scott did something quite unusual. He kept wearing his name tag. He wore it to work, and he was shocked at what happened because people would call him by name, and they would introduce themselves to him. People were friendly to him. Sometimes people came up, complete strangers, and they gave him a big hug. Well, he was surprised all the attention he got from this name tag. Well, what if you did that? What if you wore your church name tag each week? What would happen to you? Do you think maybe more people would come up and call you by name? Do you think people would be more friendly to you and introduce themselves to you? Do you think it'd be easier to talk to people? I think so. So I encourage each of you to wear the church name tag that all of you have and see what happens to you. I think you're going to find it going to be a lot easier to accept and to get to know people in your church. And it's also going to be able for a lot of other people to be able to know and accept you. You see, we need in the church to accept one another for who we are as fellow believers in Jesus Christ. Well, secondly, to promote harmony means to look after one another's needs. To make that real simple is just follow what the golden rule says in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew. It says, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Let me show you what this looks like. A pastor visited a school in Kenya, Africa. Now, he found something very surprising when he visited the school. The teacher had this bag of gummy bears, and she wanted to distribute them to her class. She didn't want the students to argue or complain about how many gummy bears they got, so the teacher did something very unusual. She gave the bag of gummy bears to a student and told the student to hand them out. Well, this student carefully took one gummy bear at a time out and handed it to each of her classmates. Then she went around and took out a second gummy bear and handed it to each of her classmates. And then there were only a few left, so she cut the gummy bears in half so that each one got exactly the same amount of gummy bears. The children never fought and complained about what they got. They were all happy that they got an equal share. You know, we often think of African children as being deprived of many things, but here's a case that shows they are very advanced because they really live the golden rule in their lives, don't they? They really do to others as they want them to do to them. Bishop Fulton Sheen was once speaking to a missionary to the Pacific Islands. And he asked the missionary what was the greatest virtue in the people he served. And the missionary said, well, I will tell you what their greatest virtue is in terms of what their greatest fear is. He said their greatest fear is called kai po. What's kai po? Well, kai po means eating all alone. The people there would not eat for days so they could share their food with someone else. They never would eat alone. They thought it was a sin to eat all alone. Can you imagine being so committed to other people that you would never eat alone? That you thought it was a sin to eat alone? Wouldn't it be great if we cared for one another like that? Certainly we need to look after one another's needs. Then thirdly, to promote harmony means to promote, promote a, a one another. It means to help one another. It means to build one another up. Mother Teresa once visited a small town in Pennsylvania. 
Now, there were some directors of the state hospital in the state there that wanted to build some halfway houses in that little town so it could help some of the patients to be able to transition back into society easier. It was a great idea. Well, the members of the town had a city council meeting, and at the meeting they decided they didn't want those kind of people in their town, and they voted down the proposal. Well, Mother Teresa, she happened to be at that city council meeting. And Mother Teresa, she stood up and she said, in the name of Jesus, make room for these children of God. When you reject them, you're rejecting Jesus. When you accept and affirm them, then you're accepting and embracing Jesus. Well, the members of the city had another vote. And guess what? This time they voted to allow the halfway houses to be built in their town. In a way, this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to say to the people in the church in Galatia years ago. In the name of Jesus, make room for these children of God. Make room for these Gentiles who do not need to have circumcision. Make room for them. When you reject them, you're rejecting Jesus. But when you accept and affirm them, you're accepting and embracing Jesus. You know, when we focus on the love of Jesus, the walls of conflict just come tumbling down, don't they? When we focus on the fact that Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead for us to forgive all of our sins, to overcome death for us so that we can have eternal life in heaven, those walls of conflict, they just come tumbling down. You see, it's the love of Jesus that helps us to overcome conflict here in our church. Let's learn from the Apostle Paul here today. Let's accept one another as fellow believers. Let's look after one another's needs. Let's become promoters of one another. Because as we do these things, God will bring harmony into our church. And we're going to be a lot better at sharing the love of Jesus with other people around us. God bless us all as we do that. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.